In this video, I'm going to explore ChatGPT and its use as a tool for language teachers. ChatGPT is basically a chatbot that can create any kind of different text that you can possibly think in a wide range of languages. And not only text, but also exercises, questions, and the answers to go with it. It has recently had an update on the 15th December 22, and since then it has become a lot better than before and a lot of teachers and other people are excited about the use of this tool. It is just amazing how quickly this tool can create any type of text and it will save so much work for teachers. Currently the chatbot is completely free and you just need to sign up for example with an existing Google account but obviously we don't know how this is going to develop in the future. This tool has been developed by a research institute in the USA and it has a lot of investors, for example, Microsoft. So it has a lot of mo money power behind it. So here are a few things that I'm going to go through. So how to use it, uh, some ideas for preparing language lessons, other uses for teachers outside the classroom and a few potential problems. So let's start with how to actually use this tool. Okay, so we just go to Google and type in chat GPT. Then you should come to this website called openai.com. And if you scroll down a bit, it says here, try chat GPT. So we go in there, it will ask you to log in or to sign up. So you can either use your email address or an existing Google account to log in. So I will do that now. So I go, you can also use your Microsoft account. So I'll go with Google. So now we're on the start page here and it gives you a few examples of what you can do. And so now we can get started. Now we're going to look at a few ideas how you can use this tool to plan your lessons really quickly and really well. So the most obvious and easy use is to generate text in any kind of language. So it knows definitely all the main languages like French, German, Spanish, English, and so on, but it even knows some uh, of the kind of minority languages, but I haven't got a full list for it. So let's start with generating text. First of all, I'm going to ask it to write me a little text about Christmas in Germany. I will do all the exercises here in English, uh, even though obviously I'm a German teacher, um, but this way that it will be more accessible for more viewers. So we'll try this out. And for this activity, I will just let it run so you can see roughly how quickly it works. And um, for all the other tasks, I will uh, speed it up a little bit or skip the process. But here you can see it's already started going. Okay, as you can see, it's produced quite a nice little text here, but it's quite a long text. So maybe this one is a bit too long for my students and I wanted a shorter text and a bit of a simpler text. So what I can do is ask follow up questions. That's one of the great things that you can do with this tool. So I'm going to ask it to write the text again in the style of a seven year old and only write up to 75 words. So by using in the style of, you can change the text completely and you can either put in a different age group or you could say in the style of Donald Trump or in the style of Edgar Allan Poe if you want to make it a bit more fun and you can give it a word limit as well. And obviously for language teachers it's great if you can make the text a lot more simple for your beginner learners. So I'll try that. This time I will speed up the process a bit but it should still only take less than a minute to create. Okay, as you can see, this text is a lot shorter. It uses some words that maybe only little kids would use, like yummy food. And this might be more of the level for the kids that I'm teaching. 
I tried to translate the text into German, but it misunderstood my command and translated the longer version of the text into German. So I'm trying it again and by giving it the shorter version of the text and then say translate this text into German. So I'm a German native speaker, so I can attest that this is a very good text, very precise translation. Earlier I did a little experiments and took a news article and put it in different translation uh, programs like Google Translate, DeepL and the chatbot here. And I have to say DeepL still won out by being slightly better with words that had different meanings, but this one is definitely very good. So now I've got this nice text in German and in English and I could now also create exercises with it. So I'm going to use the English one for now. So it should now start making a gap filler text out of the English text above. And you can see that I don't need to write down the text each time, it still knows what I'm talking about. So it knows that I'm referring to the text up there, which is great. Okay, so now it's making a gap filler text with only one gap, so that's not so useful. Let's say um, add six more gaps. So I can now adapt it more and you can see it even has written the word that is missing underneath the text. So that is a great way of making a quick worksheet. Okay, there we go. Now I've got my gap fill text. Another great way of using the text generation in this chatbot is by creating dialogues. So here's an example. Write a dialogue of a 14 year old buying train tickets. Okay, so now we've got a nice standard little text which I can then use in my lessons. And I can now also generate questions with it. So, Okay, so now we've got great questions here to turn this into a reading task and I can even ask for the answers. And I don't even need to go to the effort of writing all this out myself or working it out. Uh, the great thing is you can, can also get it to generate grammar based tasks. So for example, so I could get it to write a text about holidays in the past tense. And again, if this is too long or too complex for your learners, you could just modify it. And you can even do it right up here, so you could go into the edit. And I could say, in 40 words, in the style of a 10 year old. And then submit and it will give you a text again. And if I don't like this text, I can just say regenerate response and it will make it slightly different. So the fact that I can have different options of the text means I could either have um, several reading tasks that are quite similar to each other, or I could generate the same activity a few times and then choose the best options out of each generation. Another idea is to ask a question about a translation and ask for different options. So we'll ask it here, translate the word light into German and explain different options. And straight away it's given us a few more translations in the context and with different uh, examples. So this is a great lesson on teaching students um, how to look up words and how to use a dictionary correctly, e uh, online or book dictionary, to show that there are lots of different meanings for one word. So well, these are a few examples how you can use it in a lesson. You can also be very lazy and just type in the following. You can just say, create a worksheet to practice the gerund in English. Okay, and straight away it's made me a whole worksheet with three different tasks, with five sentences each, and different types of tasks here to practice this. Um, there are a few problems with it. A, it's put the answer straight after the sentence, so I would need to run it again and say, don't put any answers. 
Secondly, in the second one, it's made a few mistakes here. For example, in he enjoys reading, it is already in the gerund form, so I wouldn't really need to change it. And then the third exercise is very similar to the first exercise, really. So it's not ideal, but I could run this a couple of times and then choose the best task from, from each round. And not only can I say create me a worksheet, I can even create a whole lesson. So I'm saying create a lesson plan to teach pets in German to 10 year olds. <laughs> okay, so within about one and a half minutes or so, it has written me a whole lesson plan. And it might not be the most original lesson, but it's a good standard lesson. It's giving me the lesson objectives, the materials needed. It's giving me an outline of the different tasks like an introduction, practicing the vocab. It even has a little game in it, so play a memory game with the vocab. And it even suggests a, a homework here for me. So if my school required me to write a lesson plan for each of my lessons, that would definitely be a super easy way to create, create this lesson plan. And again, if I don't really like this one, I would copy and paste it into Word then regenerate a new response and maybe take a few of the new ideas that it comes up with and then mix and match the best ones. And the great thing is here for each of the points, I could ask follow up questions. So for example, where it says vocabulary, hand out a, a handout of the list of pet names, I could just ask the chatbot to create that vocab list for me if I wanted to, which is amazing. When you first start using uh, the chatbot, you really need to decide are you going to use it just for you as a teacher to create activities or are you going to introduce your students to it? The problem obviously with that is that it, once the students know about this, they might be very tempted to use this to write their homework for them. On the other hand, if you don't tell them about it, they're probably fine anyway. And at least if you tell them about it, you can talk to them about the problems of plagiarism and show them a few cool things, how they can use it to practice their language. But again, you should point out that the program is not always right. And some of the grammar explanations, for example, might not be correct. I would encourage the students to maybe use it when you're in the room so you can step in if you notice any any problems. But one great way of using it is as an actual conversation partner in the language. So they could just do a little chat with the, the chatbot in whichever language they're practicing. So I could give it um, a scenario and then just get going. So for example, here I've put in, pretend you're a shopkeeper selling t-shirts. I'm the customer coming in, greet me and ask me a question. And then normally I would obviously put in, in German. Okay, so it's playing the role of the shopkeeper now and it's saying, hello, welcome to our shop. Can I help you find anything specific today? The problem with these conversations is they're off very long. So they're maybe more for adva advanced learners. But here, for example, I could now give an answer and say, I would like a blue t-shirt and then see how the shopkeeper would react to this. So this is a really realistic way of practicing that kind of dialogue, I would say. Okay, so it's now for asking follow up questions like what size I want and what style I want. I'm learning quite a lot of vocab here to do with buying clothes. So now we come to the last point, how you could use this. And that is that you can have a lot of fun with it as well. I mean, just type in any kind of creative prompt, like write me a horror story about dot, 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 or write me a poem about dot, dot, dot. And you could put something in like, if you want to write a poem about your students, you could say, write me a stu poem about a boy called Max who likes football but doesn't like doing homework. And straight away, it's writing us a little poem here. Max is a boy who loves to play on the football field all day. He's quick and he's fast, a real pro, but when it comes to homework, he's got no go. He'd rather kick a ball than sit and write and so on. So it's a fun little poem here. The, the, the rhymes are sometimes a bit dodgy, but close enough. And it's quite a fun thing to do 
or we can have a bit of fun with this, explain what an infinitive is in the style of Homer Simpson. <laughs> okay, so it's quite a good grammar explanation here. And then it adds a bit of Homer style in by saying, just like a good do donut gives depth and meaning to my life. Mmm, donuts. So it has added a bit of Homer Simpson to this, which is quite cool. As you can see, there are lots of uses how to make your lesson preparation a lot quicker and easier with this chatbot. Now we come to some ideas how you can use it outside of lessons, but still for your teaching job. So, for example, you can use it to write emails and letters, can even write reports, calculate grades and help you with Excel. So let's have a look at a few of these things. Obviously, with these, we are reaching a point where you might ask yourself, is it cheating if I get a bot to do all these things for me? And I guess everybody has to answer that for themselves and possibly their boss will answer it for them. But for now, it's an easy way of um, making kind of everyday tasks a lot quicker. And obviously you can always take the text and make your own personal changes to it. It just gives you a good starting point. Okay, so I've copied an email here that I got from someone to ask for a meeting and I'm telling it, answer the email and say, I'm not free at those times, but I could do next yet Saturday at 10. I mean, for this one, the instructions are nearly as long as the actual answer, but maybe if you've got something more complicated, then it could help you getting started. Uh, I won't even mention how you could use it to write um, applications and so on. So for example, you could use it to write a letter to parents. Let's go here. So I did this trip last week and it took me quite a long time to come up with a, a letter there. So write a letter to parents to ask for permission for their children to go on a trip to the Christmas market in Birmingham on Monday. Obviously, I would need to add in a few more details, but let's see what it comes up with. So it doesn't only just write a short text, can we have permission, so, but it also gets a lot of extra information. Like it says there will be a fun and educational experience, that they learn about different cultures, which is great because it's for the German Christmas market. It, it has added in a time we're leaving at nine and returning at three, even though I didn't mention that. But obviously I need to fill that in and it's actually quite handy that it reminds me that I need to put this information in. I, it also tells the parents what um, what transport we're taking, that it's that the teachers will be looking after them the whole time and so on. And it mentions the attached form, which I guess I could also get the program to do for me. And at the end, I just replace my name and the whole thing is done really, which is amazing. The next part, I want to show you that you can even write reports with this. I mean, this now gets maybe a bit dodgy. So you really need to think if you want to do this, but it again can give you a few good ideas, especially if you're new to teaching and you're or like me, you're not a native speaker and you find it difficult to find the right um, kind of phrases to bring uh, things across in a in a polite way. So let's see what it does here. Okay, so we'll do write a report to parents for the subject German for a male student who's enthusiastic but struggles with grammar. Uh, use about 75 words and that's it really. And here it's created a perfect report with exactly the same kinds of phrases that I would have used. It's kept it very polite, starting with the positive and even adding some extra things like that he's act actively engaged. And it's even added in a few things here, how we can help him that I've provided extra materials and that he can come for extra help. And then a nice little summary at the end, which really makes it come across, which really uh, comes across as a positive text to the to the parents here, which is amazing. Another amazing thing is the kind of math and logic it can do, even quite complex text problems like this one. So I've put in the grade boundaries and the results for my students. And it can now give me a grade for each of my students. So it's 
taken the grade boundaries at the top, done all the math in the background, and I've got the output there. Obviously, I need to be careful here with privacy that I don't put in the student's full name because um, other people can see the text here as well. And I can make it even more complex and say this test was out of 45 and the grade boundaries are the percentages and it will work out the percentage and then give me the grade boundary as well. Another really big use for ChatGPT is that it can be used to provide formulas for other programs, for example, for Excel or JavaScript and other programming languages, even if you don't really know much about them. So I'll give you an example for Excel, which I guess is the most used by teachers. So let's say math and Excel are maybe not your strong points. You could use something like this. Students have written two tests. The first one is out of 60, the second out of 35. Write Excel formula to calculate the average for both texts. And now I put this in. Okay, so here it's straight away given me the formula I can use, which I can just stick into Excel. And not only that, but it's also given me a whole explanation how the thing works, uh, which will then help me to adapt it. Chat GPT is such an amazingly versatile tool, really. And there are lots of other uses outside of teaching that you could use it for. And you can find lots of examples on of it on YouTube and on Twitter. For example, you can get it to give you a creative writing prompt or give me an idea what to draw next. It can create programming codes um, and it can even plan a trip for you, write the uh, packing list, give you some ideas what to do in your destination and you can even use it to plan a YouTube video just like I've done. So it's written me an outline which then I adapted a bit of course but it has written the description for the video, it's given me the, the tags and the title and it could even write a blog for you or at least give you an idea what to write your next blog about. So they're just unending uses of this and I hope you have some fun trying them all out. Okay, so now we come to a few problems. So the first one that will come to mind for any language teacher, I think, will be the problem of cheating or plagiarism of the students. And as I said earlier, I think the best way is probably to have a frank talk to the students about it, explains the legal situation with plagiarism, and also explain to them that if they get the AI bot to do their homework, it will not really help them to prepare, prepare for their exams and for knowing the subject well. So a second problem that I mentioned before is plagiarism of the teachers in that is it okay for a teacher to use a lesson plan that has been written by this program, yes, yes or no. And if you ask ChatGPT if you're allowed to use the text and even if you're allowed to sell the text, it says they are free of copyright. So you can technically do what you want with them, which is great. It's just a question if that is the right thing to do morally and if you should maybe um, yeah, give, give some credit to the program. Then another problem are some, some tech technical hitches you might come across. So for example, um, sometimes when you put in a request, it will say fail to load or it will say too many requests or the website will not answer. It doesn't happen too often. And normally if you close the website and then open it again, it will then work. But it might be that if more and more people are using it, the problems will become more common because the website might not be able to deal with it because at the moment there seems to be quite a big hype um, about this and more and more people are trying out all kinds of crazy, th crazy things with it. Also, I watched another YouTube video about this where they were talking about the processing power that is behind this and how much more it costs. So a request in, in this chatbot will take up 10 to 100 times more processing tap power than a Google request, which is obviously quite a lot, which means there's a lot of pressure on the system. Um, also possibly 
more use of server power somewhere in the cloud, so to speak. So it is something to, to keep in mind. Also, the program tells you straight from the beginning that you won't be able to get up-to-date information. So it does not have any access to day-to-day uh, -day events. Um, and the last time it was fully updated was in 2021. So if you ask who won the World Cup this week, it will not necessarily know it. So that's not the type of questions that you should be putting in there. Then one big problem for language teachers, as I said, is that it sometimes gives you mistakes. And even worse, the mistakes are sometimes really convincing. So it would say, um, for example, uh, taking is a separable verb because take is one part and ing is the other part. And it was trying to convince me that this is a separable verb. And that is clearly not true. So. I, as a teacher, understand that it is wrong, but obviously if a student uses it, they might believe that and then um, use it in a wrong way. So that is definitely something that you need to be aware of and you always need to proofread any exercises or texts that you make. I would say texts are really good and I haven't found any actual grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes or anything like that in any text that it has created in either English or German. So that is very, very impressive. Then another problem is privacy. So we need to keep in mind that this is a, a, a better version of this program, really. It's not really meant as a full program. It's just for people to try out. And at the same time, we are teaching the program obviously more and more how to deal with with input and what kind of information people want because we can give it feedback with our follow-up questions and also by giving thumbs up and thumbs down so anything that we put in the company that's behind this program can look at and i'm sure it's it's being saved somewhere so we really need to be careful that we don't for example put in um, student details like their their full name their address and so on um, because other people might be able to see that despite all these problems i think it's an amazing tool and i'm hoping that they are not uh, putting it be behind a paywall within the next few days really before i had uh, time to really try it out and i hope you also have some some interesting interesting ways of of trying it out and if you want to send me any uh, questions or ideas, then obviously you can do it in the uh, comments under this video or on Twitter at Yushmo is my handle. Okay, see you there.